In this lecture, you'll learn about neural networks and generative AI models. Neural networks are based on how the brain works. They contain artificial neurons called nodes, which are arranged in a series of layers. So you can see a representation of a neural network here. And we've got a node here, which is similar to a neuron in the human brain. It's got inputs coming into it, which is similar to the dendrites of a neuron. And it's got outputs going out, which are similar to axons. So it's not the same as a human brain, but it was inspired by it. They have an input layer and output layer with hidden layers in between. So we've got the input layer where you give it some data and then the output layer where it generates the final result and all of the intelligence of how it gets to that final result is in the hidden layers in here. And you can see that all of our nodes are interconnected at each layer. The input layer receives data which the neural network needs to analyze. And nodes are interconnected from one layer to another. Each connection between nodes has a weight that signifies its relative importance. So it's not the nodes themselves that have a weight, it's the connections that are coming into them. If a node receives a high enough total value of weights from all its inputs, then it fires and passes data onto the next layer. The data then transfers through the layers until producing the final output. So to give you a very simplified example of that, let's look at this node here. And we'll say that it, the connection's coming into it. So notice that from the previous layer, each of the nodes there is connected into that node here. Let's say the connection from this top node has got a weight of one. This next one is a weight of two. This one's also a weight of two. This one's a weight of three. And this one is a weight of four. And let's say that for this node to fire, it needs to receive a value of seven. Well, if this node and this node here in the previous layer fire, then the incoming weight is three. That is not enough. So this node will not fire and pass data down to the next layer. But if the connection from this node, which was four, the connection from this node, which was two, and the connection from this node all fire, which was one, that adds up to seven. So that will trigger this node to fire and to pass data on downstream. So you can see that as traffic is going through the hidden layers, the path it's going to take depends on the weight on the connections between the nodes between our different layers. Deep learning is a type of machine learning based on a neural network with at least two hidden layers. So that's at least four layers in total when we include the input and the output layer. The multiple layers can progressively analyze the input more deeply. For example, in image classification. So if we feed this neural network images of different animals and it needs to classify what particular animal each image is. Lower layers may identify edges in an image while higher layers classify it as an animal or vehicle. So it gets progressively more advanced as it goes through the different layers. The path data takes across the neural network and the final output is influenced by the weight which is on the connections between nodes. If the wrong output is produced, for example, an image of a cat as the input is classified as a dog when it gets output, then that must be corrected. So we need to train the neural network to do its job correctly. The way that is usually done is through backpropagation. Backpropagation is used to signal back through the network that the weights have to be changed. So let's say that we input an image of a cat, but then when it gets out at the other side, it is being classified as a dog. So there was a problem across the hidden layers. It's not taking the correct path. The way that we can influence that is by influencing the weight of connections. So this could be done by a human or an automated method where when it is incorrect the output we say no that was incorrect you said that this was a dog but it is actually a cat we signal back to tell it that and then the system will automatically use a mathematical formula to change the weights on the connections and then we iteratively go through this so we just keep cycling through 
until we get to the stage where the system is consistently producing the correct result. So we go through multiple iterations of backpropagation until we are getting accuracy. Okay, so that was neural networks. Next, let's talk about generative AI models. So these are models that are used in generative AI for generating new content. Three common generative models built on neural networks are transformer models, generative adversarial networks, GANs, and variational autoencoders, VAEs. Transformer models typically work with text, but they can work with other media. And GANs and VAEs typically work with visual data, like images and the video. The models are not mutually exclusive. An AI system can use multiple models, so it could use a transformer also in conjunction with a GAN. It's actually a running theme in this section. I'm going to be covering a lot of the different AI models and techniques. You don't have to settle on just one for any particular application. You can mix and match between the different techniques and models to get the desired result. Unimodal models take instructions from the same input type as their output. For example, creating text from a text prompt. Multimodal models can take input from different sources and generate output in various forms. For example, from a text input, you could create an image and also a text caption for that image as well. So let's go through those three different models that were mentioned previously, starting with transformer models. A transformer tracks relationships in sequential data, always working with sequential data for transformers. They learn what is appropriate to come next in sequences. So they could learn what is appropriate to come next in a text sentence, for example. In fact, let's take this example right here. They learn what is appropriate to come. Well, what word would be appropriate next? It could be next, or previously, or after, or before. Banana would obviously make no sense. So what transformer models do is they analyze huge data sets. So we're always going to be using a massive amount of data. For training, we're normally going to use a data set which consists of articles from the internet, and other places like that, so it can get a huge amount of text to analyze. And the way it does the analysis is by figuring out what comes next in sequences. They use a mathematical self-attention technique to understand the importance of different parts of the sequence and determine context. With language, context is very important, and two similar sentences could actually have completely different meanings. Transformer models are really good at understanding context in, sen in sentences and also generating new sentences as they build new sequences of text. So transformer models, they are often used with text, but they can work with any type of sequential data. For example, DNA for genetics research, amino acids for drug development, and also video. They typically use massive data sets, so they're trained on a huge amount of data because they need that to build the full understanding. So you might think, well, if they're using these huge data sets, does that mean that they're going to take a long time to be trained? Well, they can analyze data unsupervised, so it does not need a human operator to label the data beforehand. Also, they can do parallel processing. They can process multiple sequences at the same time. So because of this, they are acceptably fast to implement. The transformer architecture is composed of encoder and decoder neural networks. The encoder is only concerned with the input, and it's typically used for classification. For example, classifying images of different animals. The decoder is used for output and is used to generate data, such as a text article or a text programming code. The encoder and decoder can also be used together for tasks such as text translation from one language to another. And LLMs, large language models, are built on transformers, and let's talk about them next. But before I get to LLM, I'll explain what NLP, natural language processing, is, because these two things are very similar. 
NLP, natural language processing, uses a broad range of rule-based methods and also machine learning to enable computers to understand and generate language as it is spoken and written. So this is, as it is spoken and written, that is the natural part of the language. It focuses on recognizing patterns in language to understand its structure. And its tasks include understanding, generating, and classifying language, translation from one language to another, text to speech, and speech to text. NLP applications use a comparatively small data set compared to modern machine learning and a method which is relevant to their specific goal. So there's, they can use different rule-based methods or machine learning methods to accomplish their tasks. And NLP has been around for a really long time. You might have heard of Dragon before. They do text-to-speech and speech-to-text software. They've actually been around since the 80s. So way before modern machine language, machine learning was available, they were using rule-based methods to do NLP. Like NLP, LLMs, large language models, also perform complex language processing tasks. So they do the same things that NLPs do. Well, NLP models choose a method relevant to their specific goal, and LLM always uses a transformer-based neural network built with a huge data set. It has to work like that to be classified as an LLM. They can handle almost any NLP task and are very good at generating human-like text in response to instructions. So because of the way that transformers work, they're very good at building out sequences. This is really good for creating new text. Their tasks include chatbots, text summarization of longer articles, translation from one language to another language, and writing original content such as essays or programming code. Generative pre-trained transformers, GPTs, are a transformer-based LLM. GPT-1, GPT-2, GPT-3, GPT-4 were developed by the vendor OpenAI, but all LLMs with the same characteristics can be broadly known as GPTs. ChatGPT, also from OpenAI, is built on its own GPT models, and GPT uses a decoder to generate text from a prompt. So you saw me doing the example using ChatGPT before, where I entered a text prompt asking it to build out an OSPF configuration for me, and it generated the text, it generated that configuration. The following are examples of how you can use a transformer in network operations. You could provide a prompt to generate device configurations, like the example I showed before. You could provide network data and device configurations to generate network diagrams. So that would be using multimodal models because you would be providing network data and device configurations in the form of text and you're going to generate a network diagram from that information. You could also ask it questions such as to check what an error message means and how you should troubleshoot it. If you are going to be using transformers or really any type of AI in network operations where you are generating text, where you're generating configurations, or you're asking questions, you need to be aware of hallucinations. Hallucinations are where the generative model gets the information wrong. So if you're using just a general GPT that was not purpose built for network operations, you need to be careful and double check the information that it is giving you. Okay, next type of model is GAN, Generative Adversarial Networks. With GANs, two deep learning models compete against each other. Those are the generator and the discriminator. The generator learns to create new data such as text, images, audio, or video that resembles the training data set. So whatever was in that original data set, whatever type of output you want to create, the generator from that original data set learns how to create it. So it can, for example, learn how to create images of dogs. That's the generator. It's what creates the content. Then we've got the discriminator. The discriminator learns to distinguish between the generated data and the real data. So you could be, for example, giving a GAN, the generator, the task of creating images of dogs. The discriminator checks to see, does this look like fake data or can I not tell it apart from the original data in the training data set? 
The discriminator will typically easily identify early efforts as fake. So it's going to be like, this does not look much like a dog at all. I know it's definitely a fake. And it will then tell the generator to retry, to try again, until it starts making better images. As training progresses, the generator will produce data that can fool the discriminator and humans. The discriminator itself also improves with training, with experience as well. And GANs are often used to create visual data. GAN models can generate network traffic simulations and train AI applications to detect network anomalies and security threats. The generator, when we're doing this, creates network traffic simulations. With training, the generator learns to create more realistic simulations, simulations that look more like normal traffic patterns. And the discriminator learns to detect if the traffic patterns are fake, so if this is normal network traffic or if it has got anomalies. So this is a way, this is a model that you can use to train your AI system to see if the network traffic patterns it's seeing are not normal, are different than usual. GANs are also good at creating network diagrams. They can do this in conjunction with transformer models. So you could feed them text like the output of show commands like show, DD, show CDP. You could also load your configurations in there, other information, and then the GAN can then multimodal. It can create an image from that. It can create a network diagram. The last model to look at is VAE, Variational Autoencoders. And these are quite similar to GANs. They're also typically used for images as well. They also use two neural networks to generate data. An encoder and decoder work in tandem to generate output that is similar to the original input. The encoder compresses the input data, optimizing it to retain only the most important information. The decoder then reconstructs the input from the compressed representation. So the encoder creates a compressed copy, then the decoder basically decompresses that, or it creates something similar to what the original input was. The decoder generates content which is optimized for the important information because we did the compression at the start. That reduces the less desired characteristics. So VAEs are good at cleaning noise from images only keeping the most relevant information. They're also good at finding anomalies because of this way that they work. It differentiates between good and bad characteristics. Like GAN, VAE can also be used to detect network anomalies and security threats. It can also be used to generate network traffic simulations. GANs are better than VAEs for network diagrams because they produce more detailed output. Thanks for watching. If you want to get hands-on practice with Cisco Networks for free, then you can download my 400-page CCNA lab guide, which you can see above my head right now. Also, check out the video about my CCNA course. It's the highest-rated course online. Thanks.